This video will take the part that you created and go through the process of creating a detailed drawing for an individual part. The first thing that you want to make sure that you've done is save your work. And previously the last step that we did in the part creation process is save the work so we can move on to the next step which is creating a drawing. Now when we create the drawing we're going to create a top front right side isometric view. We'll add dimensions but then we'll also show you a couple of other capabilities. First off we'll show you how to put text in the title block. S secondly we're going to show you how to save the file as a PDF so that way you can submit it in the Dropbox as a PDF along with your IDW file. There'll be follow-up videos later that'll talk about how to create drawings for assemblies which are a little bit different uh, and a little bit more integrated. So where do we begin? Well you finished part 829 and what we're going to do now is come up to the top next to the letter I. We could go on the letter I and choose new or we can choose the drop down and choose drawing and that's the same thing. It's just one step removed and so instead of going to the big letter I and choosing the new option and selecting uh, English ANSI drawing We'll just go ahead and choose the drawing option which will use the current default options for that to occur. And when we choose the drawing, what it is doing is it's loading now Okay, took a little bit over a minute. We're not even going to edit it out. I know there was a lot of dead space there. But just again, it's to show you that it does take a little while for the drawing sheet to load. Now when you look at the drawing sheet, it tells us that the size of the sheet is C size. And if you go back to your basic drafting knowledge, that C size sheet is 22 inches wide by 18 inches tall. That's a really large piece of paper. For our basic drawings that we're going to be utilizing primarily in class, we'll be using 8.5 by 11, which is an A size, and 18 by 12 or 11 by 17, uh, which is a B size sheet. So we're going to need to edit this particular drawing. To do that, all of our editing of any of the models is done, whether it's a part, whether it's an assembly or a drawing, all the editing is done here in the browser window. To edit, we right mouse click, and we're going to right mouse click on sheet number one, and it's going to ask us all the different options. Do you want us to copy it, delete it, change the base view, uh, create a format, but what we're interested in is editing the sheet. We can name the sheet if we'd like to, but primarily we need to change the size to 8.5 by 11. Naming the sheet is important when you do an assembly, so you know what sheet corresponds to what drawing that you're needing for the actual assembly packet. So when you have 5, 6, 8, 10, 15, 20 drawings as a 40, 50, 60 as part of the assembly, naming the sheets is extremely important. It also 
provides an area for revision so if this is a revised sheet you can also um, accommodate that. If you have multiple sheets it will ask, ask at the bottom it will automatically put in sheet one of one, sheet one of two, sheet one of three if you add more sheets for an assembly drawing or other details. We'll choose OK and you'll notice that the sheet size is now changed. Boy, that title block really takes up a lot of real estate, so we're going to have to change that too. So, first thing we did was edit the sheet. The second thing we're going to do is delete the title block. I know, you need to have a title block. So, under Drawing Resources, we have the ability to add an ANSI A title block. So all I did was hit the plus signs to get down to the title block ANSI A, right mouse click, and I'll insert it. Takes up significantly less real estate as part of that process. As part of the title block, we have the ability to fill in some features with this. Now, it's not sheet based, it is drawing based. So you have to be kind of careful. This is great for a single drawing environment. When you start to get to multiple drawings, like an assembly, editing this particular item that I'm going to show you will only edit or only apply to all the sheets. It's an overview. If you need to edit the actual title block, you'll want to come down under the sheet and edit the title block information. And to do that, all I did there was right mouse click on field text. Now if you want to do the overall, there's a feature called iProperties. And in iProperties, we can edit some of the summary items. For example, you can change the author. Or, if the title of the project And I'm changing it from ETD 101 to Inventor Class. Why? Because we go to an MET designation next fall, and some students will still be using the 2012 software. So the title could be Inventor Class, or maybe the subject needs to be Inventor Class. And that way, the title of the drawing will be 8-29 when we edit the field text directly. In the field text, under the drawing sheet that we changed, we can edit the text provided. So the title, I want to edit that and put in 8- Editing the eye properties is the best way to put the information on the sheet. By right mouse clicking the field text, we're not able to uh, edit the items. If I try to type something in, it just displays the items here in the Edit Property field. If I choose the I Properties button, it allows me to edit the field itself. So if I go in under Summary and choose Title and put 8-29, for the project, it will show up in the title. Now I can make custom fields, and that's an advanced area that will be discussed later in the class. But at this point, you need to have your name, uh, the date, the title, the sheet size, and then we're going to add a text item for scale when we're finished. To place the drawing on the sheet, we use either the base or the projected views. The base view is probably the easiest to use, and it's going to select the last 
drawing that you worked on. If that's not the correct one you need to do, you can choose and open an existing drawing that you've previously saved. Now the nice thing is is that you'll see a preview of it, don't left mouse click yet, but you'll see a preview of it if you move your pointer on the drawing sheet area. Notice that you can put it off the sheet or on the sheet. There is no specific requirement for that. You can also change the current orientation. So if you wanted an isometric to be the first view placed, you can do that. Typically, however, for detailed drawings, you want the front view to be placed. And the front view is typically the first view that you drew, which is exactly what we see here, is the first view that we created for our drawing. I'm going to locate this front view in just a second. You'll also see that we have the ability to change the scale of the view. So we can increase it or decrease it based on the size of the drawing sheet and the size of the part in relation to the drawing sheet. We can also shade this view so we can make it shaded. So when we're doing a isometric, we can shade the isometric so it looks more realistic of a part. We're going to leave it as hidden lines so the hidden lines will display. And so when I select it, you'll notice that the hidden lines are there. You'll also notice that it's automatically allowing me to project for isometrics and orthographic views. So I'm going to go ahead and project the top view. And I'm going to project the right side view. And I'll project up in the upper corner an isometric view. Now notice that I just have boxes. I can keep projecting all these views by selecting the left mouse click. But to stop, I have to right mouse click to bring the pop-up menu and say, create the views I've selected. So to stop it, you need to right mouse click. It automatically creates all the views, puts the hidden lines in. Boy, isn't this sweet? Automatically for you. So we have the views now created. And remember I mentioned that we can shade the view? You'll notice that when you highlight a view, you'll get a red box around it. If you right mouse click inside the red box, you can do a couple of things. You can edit the view, which is what we're going to do first. Um, but you can also project the view, make a section view from it, crop it, meaning shrink the image or cut part of the image off, so forth. So there's quite a few things that you can work on from these particular views. So we're going to edit this particular view. And all I want to do is shade it. That's it. We're going to keep it at the same scale, or let's shrink it down to half the original size so it doesn't take up as much real estate, and select the Shade button. So I change the scale, select the Shade button, choose OK, and you can see that it makes it a little bit smaller, but you'll also notice that when I highlight the red box and get real close to the edge, I get a Move icon, and I can move this around. So again, it gives me a little bit more room to work. I just wanted to make sure we had enough room for our drawing environment. I'm going to spread this out just a bit more. The next step is to add some dimensions. And then when we're finished doing some basic dimensioning practice, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to create a section view. And the idea behind a section view is to cut a portion of the object so you can see an additional feature. 